This game came out a year ago on Xbox, and now, just a few days ago, it has come out for PS4. Sad to say, this is not an April Fool's joke, this is real life, and this is a police game named APB. Today I'm going to be reviewing it, going into all the goods, the bads, and the uglies, so without further ado, let's dive into this. <laughs> Before I review the entire game itself, let's just go into the nitty gritty of things right away and I'm going to talk about stability and performance. Now, normal games run at about 60 frames per second if you have a really good engine, moderate games at 30 frames per second. This game, yeah, it runs at 10 frames per second. This thing was made on like a toaster engine, I don't know what it was, maybe a steamer engine, I'm not too sure, I don't know what the developers were thinking. This game was like shit. Whenever I hold down the L, I don't know, joystick or whatever it is, to turn my car, it takes it like three seconds to actually process I'm doing that. And I'm my hands off the joystick and I'm still moving. Like what the hell? Shooting in this game is horrible as well. Like it's really hard to move whenever your controller is delayed like three seconds. I mean, really they should not have released this game. This game was on the Xbox a year ago. Why release it now if you have not updated a single damn thing? For real? Next thing I'd like to review is the mechanics in the game. Now aside from those horrible sensitivity controls, I've got to hand kudos to them though. Mechanics in this game aren't actually that bad. Of course, you can actually use turning indicators which are in very few other games, but hey, they still have them anyways. Only problem with turning indicators is that half the time they don't even want to work and you have to go to this stupid ass scoreboard menu whenever you access them. But nonetheless, I mean, turning indicators are still really cool. Uh, not to mention the shooting, you can actually choose which side you're looking at your character. I wish they had a first person, but at the same time, not really, because it just make the game even more crappy, but... I mean, the mechanics are really great, it's just like GTA mechanics, except that X is to jump, triangle is to flip your sirens, and the horn button on GTA, which is L3, uh, is actually the same thing as the horn, so that's really interesting, and I thought I really liked the mechanics that well. Now I'd like to move on to customization. The only thing about customization is that if you want to zoom in, you zoom in right to your character's fucking balls. The cool thing about it is that you get to see the female ass, though. I mean, hey, it's a lose-win situation. But nonetheless, though, on a serious note, customization is really cool. You can either look like Dwayne the Rock Johnson or fucking Fat Joe ate too many potato chips, and you can still somehow graduate the academy. I don't know how, but you can choose a lot of things. Texture, features, abundance of something, uh, appearance of your lips, chest hair, even randomize your character's appearance, your height, your weight, everything in between. Uh, of course you can't change your uniform, which is really stupid, but you can add your, your facial hair. Everything, basically anything you can think of, you can change on there. Uh, I, I don't know about penis size, that might be something different. But nonetheless, customization is like a 10 out of 10. The final thing I'd like to add about this is the plot. Now, of course, this is a RPG slash free roam game. Uh, it's basically, you can choose either between becoming the criminal or becoming the enforcer, aka the police officer, trainee, whatever it is. I don't know whether it's trainees on the street, but that is going to be for a different day to theorize. Uh, you, if you are the enforcer, you do get dispatch missions. Of course, criminals can interfere with those. And if you are a criminal, I don't know, I haven't really tested it out yet, but uh, yeah, you'll be t it'll be too laggy to find out anyways. Uh, but since you can choose two factions now, of course, there's no storyline to this, so that's why I cannot rate this. I can't just give it a bad rating just because there's no story. I mean, not all games, like you've got Diablo 3 and Assassin's Creed who have stories, but you got Dark Souls and GTA and all that stuff. Well, GTA Online that have, like, free stories, so it's completely up to the player on what you want your story to be. Of course, the graphics are too poor to understand what the story could possibly be, but yeah. And so, guys, the final verdict of this game out of 10 stars would probably be about 3. Uh, only because the graphics are bad, this is sketchy, nothing has been improved since the Xbox One version of last year. Uh, no new mechanics, no new features, no new concepts. Of course, I have to give it three stars because of the relatively okay mechanics, the decent overall structure of how the game could possibly have been laid out, and the potential for it. I imagine that this is probably made on some Steam or Cookie engine, but if it gets to like a Titanium or Universal engine, then by all means this thing will be blowing up. I don't know how this game requires 3.14 megabytes, but that is beyond me. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, these are completely biased opinions. If you do have different opinions about the game and you love it, by all means, that's completely fine. I'm not persuading you to change your opinion. And with that being said, guys, I'm Officer. I'm signing out.